Hey guys, my dad asked me to tell you that today we're going to be replacing a power strip with an automatic transfer switch. Let's get started! What's up guys, a few videos ago I showed you uh, an APC automatic transfer switch. Uh, and as you heard a little bit before, uh, I am trying to get my assistants into the video. So if you do hear some uh, laughter or giggling or whatever, I apologize, I can't really uh, stop that. At any rate, um, so I showed you before an APC automatic transfer switch and I'm gonna uh, get rid of that Mid-Atlantic Power PD915R that's in the rack. First things first, I need to power down all my servers. Uh, I did make sure that nobody right now is using uh, any online services, so uh, TVs are off, uh, gaming systems are off, PCs are off. Uh, so we're good to go. Okay, so no more activity lights, everything's shut down properly. Uh, so what I need to do is take that uh, uh, Mid-Atlantic power strip out of the rack, uh, make sure I unplug everything, and then I'll get the APC unit in the rack, and I'll show you how that goes in. Okay, you guys have seen this before. I've taken off the side panel off of my rack, and I wanted to show you how the uh, power was currently plugged in. This right here is the uh, power strip and its power cord is routed down the side of the rack and then plugged into my uh, battery backup there on the bottom. Right now, um, or actually before I unplugged it all, um, what was being powered off of here was my firewall, the cable box uh, from the cable company, and the uh, slide out console which we've uh, seen before so I've unplugged those guys and every once in a while my Cisco switch was plugged in there as well but I usually just leave it unplugged and then when I would need it I would just um, plug it in there okay guys I'm back at the bench this is the APC automatic transfer switch that's going in the rack. Uh, I need to get the mounting hardware uh, installed so that I can uh, put this in the rack the right way. Let me show you how this mounting hardware works. So we've got this bracket and you have these four uh, mounting holes here. And those guys screw into the side of the unit here. And then the other side has this a corresponding piece that mounts to the back of the rack right there and then these slide in like that and then of course they're adjustable and then you get these uh, little lock nuts that you know you screw into there so that you can tighten it up and then that way this won't move at all so let's get that in the rack all right so check this out now I have the um, I guess I'm sort of test fitting the transfer switch and I have it um, at least pushed up against this uh, most forward facing uh, support brace right here and the reason why I'm doing that is because this back bracket that I just showed you um, which connects right here is kind of long uh, I had originally intended to actually push this back at the same level as the switch which also happens to be at the same level where the old um, uh, power strip was. The problem is is that this mounting bracket is too long. I mean I could mount this back uh, that way that way, uh, but I would have to take these out and actually cut them to uh, to make them fit and I kinda don't feel like doing that so I think what I'm gonna do is leave this mounted here up front uh, maybe up a little bit and I'll still have enough clearance to get underneath here and of course to get up here and then I'll be able to use the mounting hardware in the back uh, the way that it was meant to be uh, and I think that will probably be the best uh, because I want to make sure that this is secured um, properly especially because I'm gonna have so much stuff plugged into it alright so the transfer switch is out of the rack uh, and I put it right back on the workbench for one more thing before I finally get it in place 
and I wanted to, there's my assistant, she's helping me, I wanted to install uh, this little bracket here. Watch your hands. And that bracket has got those little loops that will loops. let me um, secure stuff that I plug in. So if I am plugging in this guy here, like that, then I actually can take a um, like a zip tie and loop it through here to secure this so that this won't pull out. Uh, so we'll go from there, we'll get this in the rack and then power everything back up. Alright, I had a little bit of a mix up when I was pulling that uh, transfer switch out. Um, you can see that I nicked this little network cable. Uh, this actually powers uh, the network switch that's over by my uh, workbench so I'll just have to replace that. I've got a couple of these laying around so no big deal. Okay so I've got the transfer switch in finally so it's screwed in permanently. Here are the brackets and then the back side you can see here as my kids are laughing in the background. The power cables uh, for this guy are on the right hand side um, right here whereas the last guy that I had power cables were here on the left so I had these routed uh, down the left hand side of the rack over here so I'm just gonna have to route them on the other side so that's not a big deal alright so I've got everything plugged in and powered up and you can see the front of the unit here so I've got uh, source A and B right now input A is what's powering my equipment uh, in the back of the unit it's a little tough to see but I've got my home server and my uh, firewall, the cable box, and my network switch, so the little five port switch here in the bottom, uh, plugged in. Eventually I will have my PBX server plugged in there, but right now it's not plugged because I have to um, uh, wrap up that project. So let me show you how this works. Um, source A and Source B are uh, each plugged into my battery backups. Uh, source A is plugged into the uh, Smart UPS or Smart Ups 2200 and Source B is plugged into the Smart Up 700 and I realize now that I actually um, this is a piece of equipment that you haven't seen yet uh, maybe a couple months ago I put this in and I just realized now that I never made a video about it and uh, that's actually kind of surprising I would have thought that would have occurred to me but I think I was probably too excited to get it that uh, I didn't even I just wanted to get it in the rack as quickly as possible. Um, this guy I picked up, uh, it's a Smart Ups 2200. It's uh, really, really heavy. It uses the same kind of batteries, just more of them, as the Smart Up 700. So I now have Source A and Source B. So what will happen is, uh, right now everything is running off of the 2200. And if I have a power outage, that will kick in and run. And then when that dies uh, hopefully the switch will kick over and then run off the 700 uh, if I need to take this out of service for uh, any reason where if I want to take the batteries out or um, maybe take it out altogether if I have a problem with it or whatever I don't have to worry about powering anything down because I now have the transfer switch so let me get the uh, camera on a tripod and I'll have it um, I'll show you how that works then hopefully you can get an idea of uh, how this is going to be useful Okay, camera's on a tripod, and I'm zoomed in so you can actually see the status uh, status lights on the front of the unit. Uh, right now, input A, which is uh, active, that's the SmartUps 2200, and the test that I'm going to do is I'm going to power it down, and then you should see this automatically click over and choose input B. And my equipment should not be affected, should uh, continue to stay on and um, that'll be the test. So I'm going to duck down, hopefully you can hear me, and I'm going to shut off the 2200 and you should see that click over. Okay, so the 2200 is being powered off right now. And you see how that just clicked over and my equipment is still on. So we're all set there. So I'm actually going to turn it back on um, in just a second, but that that's what we got so you see that um, the transfer switch did exactly what it was supposed to do um, 
and that's great and that's exactly what I want all right one last test um, so both units are on my input uh, preference here is uh, A because that's the 2200 uh, say for example I want to turn off the 2200 because I want to do work on it or whatever I can actually hit this preference button here and then you'll see that click over and now input A is uh, not active so I can actually then turn it off and be all set there so that's kinda cool you also have the option to have um, no preference and I originally thought that was like the off switch um, but I guess I'm wrong here so um, I'm gonna leave it on A as my my preference and I think we're all set alright one last thing before we wrap up the network management card right now I do not have plugged in um, if I do plug it in one thing that I just noticed is or just realized really is that the uh, door for my rack actually uh, closes on this little stop right here and this network cable sort of comes out a little bit beyond or just about even with this plug or with this uh, ridge here and that's the front of the door I should have enough space uh, but you know I don't know if this is gonna hit the door or not and if it does you know no big deal I can actually just take this out and move it back just a little bit uh, and then have it line up against here uh, but for right now I think it's fine because I'm not going to use this um, but you know if I do then I, I'll make the adjustment but for right now I think we're all set with this project so thanks for watching everybody see you next time